Okay, now we're going to transform the inverse function. Remember, the inverse function is not a continuous function. They have these uh, a vertical and a horizontal asymptote that causes uh, the, the graph of the function to have a break. And so because of that, notice it's not in the kind of traditional form such as this right here. So this is how you need to look at the value, the numerical value in the numerator represents the a, the number not, not inside the fraction, not part of the fraction, but outside the fraction, that's the d value. And then the denominator, that has to do with all of the horizontal shifts. Okay, so, and remember, uh, when it was the domain and range, both of them, left and right, it gets really close to zero and then um, has a break. And then on the other side of the graph, it starts at zero and then goes off towards infinity, positive or negative infinity, up and down the same thing. We're going from negative infinity and it gets really close to zero and it stops. And then really close to zero, it go ahead and it it resumes. So the normal domain and range is negative infinity up to zero, union zero to positive infinity. And then the range, same thing, negative infinity up to zero, union symbol zero to positive infinity. However, when there's shifts, the asymptotes shift as well. If there's a vertical shift, the asymptote shifts. And whatever this shifts to, that's what these numbers shift to. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So this is going to be a little bit longer uh, video. So we know we have a vertical stretch because it's an integer so it's going to rise faster we know that uh, there's not a horizontal stretch because there is no number other than one attached to the b but it is being shifted to the, the left or the right and it is being shifted up or down so let's look at the so normally you would you would do the stretches or compressions first and then the reflections and then the shifts so the only integer point i'm going to have us look at is this integer these two integer points well that's at one one so the y value if we multiply the y value by two the point that was here now gets shifted up to here and negative one times two so notice the graph would do this right and then this says it gets shifted left or right well the opposite of negative one is positive one so we can move this asymptote one and then that entire graph would be moved this also says the graph gets shifted up one so the asymptote gets shifted up one and then you draw the graph accordingly but i'm going to go ahead and show you whoops since i have right behind here oops you can still see my the asymptotes that I drew so that will look confusing so look at what happened it got shifted to the right one and up one so and then the entire graphs got shifted and notice that this graph kind of rises more sharply than this graph all right and so oh so what we have to be careful about for the domain the opposite of negative one is positive one so we in the domain the graph gets starts from negative infinity then gets very close to one then there's a break and then it starts from one and heads off to positive infinity 
And for the range, well, you can just look at this number right here. Everything got shifted up one. So that's how you list the domain and range for an inverse function. And this is how you think of the values in terms of how things are being stretched, compressed, reflected, or shifted. All right, that's it for this one.